Hello everybody, Pinstripe here and welcome to the joys of Field Hospital. We are getting back to basics with some commentaries today and starting off with this map. Um, I'm going to be running through all of the new maps in their own individual upcoming videos, but like I said, getting back to basics with commentary, because commentaries are where I started, where it's just me and the gameplay, where I can mention some talking points. Um, but in terms of this gameplay, it is going to be a full match here on uh, Field Hospital. It is blue versus purple, and the teams do differ. For those that are really interested, uh, the blue team are coming out with the Medgren Para Scout Para, while the purple team, Team 2, is the Grand Para Scout double sapper. It is me controlling both teams, I'm effectively playing chess by myself, but it raises some interesting points for the map itself and just general gameplay that I'll be discussing as we go along. Um, a lot of it is also kind of jogging my own memory because for a lot of these maps I put them together with some core ideas, put them out to the community and then obviously over this past year I've just been really busy so <laughs> getting back to them and actually just being able to sit down and play them when I recorded this footage it was like midnight so I was kind of sleepy not to say that that's an excuse for the bad parts of the gameplay but as we get to the end it will be a bit weird but I'll explain that as we go along so field hospital the big big thing with this map of course is that we have multiple methods of healing and that is through crates that is through a medic if you bring one and that is through the buildings in the medical and mash tent and what i want to kind of preach first things first is of normalizing healing and i find that for a lot of hogs of war players the introduction of um more readily available um buildings that can heal you either to full health in the mash tent or to just by 50 in the medical one. There is a lot of health to go around and I can see why it can feel oversaturated on this map. When you're taking attention away from dealing damage onto pigs and you're having to use an entire turn or part of a turn to deal damage onto armaments, so onto buildings in this case, onto the shelters, onto the pillbox, and indeed onto the medical tents as well, that's where players can kind of get a bit frustrated in that I'm not doing, I'm, I'm having to take time away to deal with this building that could potentially fully heal up an enemy pig. And I find that that is the, the give and take with this. You know, you have to plan around your opponent utilizing those buildings. Of course, when you introduce poison into the mix, it gets a bit more complicated, but I find that's where it's a, another well-balanced thing because there are multiple ways of removing poison on this map and I know that at a higher skill that's where the issues can arise and that players can potentially exploit things but from playtesting I mean I've only really played this first map here so the gameplay footage that you're seeing is the first proper match that I have played against myself I guess on this map so I wanted to mix up the uh, classes that were brought on both sides I wanted to introduce sort of the normality of the league that we have with starting with a medic and bringing a grenadier as well whereas team two the purples aren't so strong but they do have the higher health pigs of the sappers so having the higher uh, usage of shrapnels the higher availability of shrapnels i should say um, does come in handy later on which you will see but i also have to say that i do really like how the low ground now the water brings everything together it makes it that little bit more dangerous in that yeah okay you get knocked down and you can get up again as the song says but <laughs> but you still have a long way to traverse and there is the possibility that you fall in the water but it's all fine and dandy when you get 90 hp damage on a shrapnel which still isn't enough to kill this scout even though he uh, is very close to death so forgetting of course that the med is in the pillbox as well the scout that went to do some poisoning forgot that he was there and he can fully capitalize on the trank to gain that extra turn so when you do bring the medic you hold a, a higher defensive position because of the uh, tranquilizer you have the easier access compared to bridge the gap but that is the the main downside is in that if your opponent is bringing the medic then you are at risk of losing your turn if you get too close and that is I guess always it's it's always been the uh, the same way with Bridge the Gap as a whole, uh, regardless of the map type, whether it's old or the new one, or at least the current one for Bridge the Gap. 
um, there is always this big risk between attack and defense in that you can gain so much from running from one side of the map to the other and closing that distance between you and your opponent but in doing so you then potentially raise like two other issues for yourself i.e that you are too close to the enemy medic and are at risk of being tranked or you risk some easy poisons but the purple team are able to deal with the scout so they actually draw first blood in this match um, which i did not expect um, if anything uh, for a lot of these, you know, I, I tried to approach every shot the most competitive way I could. Um, I say that as the bazooka flies over his head. But yeah, flicking back and forth between both teams uh, is an interesting uh, way of playing the game. I would highly recommend it because it does make you think about uh, just the, the single turn that you're about to take. You know, what is it that I can achieve in this turn? How much can I get done? Who do I need to go for? What do I need to destroy? And you can quite easily lose track, so it, it sticks quite well to uh, how most players feel during their matchup <laughs> in a competitive game. When you come to your league matches and it's always like, I'm about to start this match against this opponent and everything that I know about this game just goes out the window. Everything I think I know, all of my planning that's led up to this point, and you start your first few turns and you, you start to fail and that's when your head starts to drop and that's where I can see the introduction of additional healing buildings being an issue for other players too because when you have been absolutely pummeling one pig for the entirety of the match and then he just jumps into a mash tent and heals himself up back up to full hp that can be very disheartening you know you've put all of this time and energy into trying to kill this pig and in two turns he ends up healing himself but i feel like that's where Stronger players, um, more well-rounded players are going to be um, a lot stronger in utilizing those kind of buildings, in working those buildings into their turn timetable, I guess. Again, in combination with the use of poison and being able to time uh, gaining a turn while also being able to heal as well. But again, trying to preach that idea that normalizing the use of healing through buildings is okay it's an okay thing to do it's okay to do it it's okay to have to take that time with an extra shrapnel or with a cluster bomb or with an air burst to deal damage onto those buildings to have to look at a specific map know that there are healing buildings on there and having to plan around that it depending i guess on uh which round you're playing because you may not have specific classes available uh, and then going into that match and trying to plan out, you know, trying to prevent your uh, opponent from using those buildings or at least knocking them down to within a single hit's worth to be able to destroy them. Which in most cases, if you've got at least one sapper on your team, one shrapnel will be enough to destroy an 80 HP uh, mash tent. I mean, I know that in Death Patch, they... Uh, mash tents are a little bit stronger they're on 100 hp but that's still destroyable within two turns or you know if you do get the full extent of a shrapnel you can one tap those mash tents so drawing on the argument that the mash tents are too strong because they have 20 hp more than usual i don't see that as a warrant to then have to change it back i didn't see 80 hp as being the default setting for all mass units they're a big building they're a strong building so they should become your priority target as much as a pillbox is really like a pillbox has the 100 hp shelters have 100 hp so having two mass units that are really close together on death patch with 100 hp i feel like changes the dynamic somewhat especially considering that on that map you have tanks as well that have the air burst capabilities to destroy those mash tents or again within two turns at the very least bring it down to destructive range of course all of this is just my opinion and i will be going through gameplay footage of that in future actually playing a full round on death patch and talking a little bit more in detail but focusing specifically on field hospital i feel like the balance is in the right place i have heard the argument as well that you can obviously stick to the standard approach for a bridge the gap type map 
in that you go heavy on the powers on the first few turns. You fly over, you nick all of the um, all of the weaponry and the pickups um, from that side. But I have actually found through testing that that isn't the most viable. Yes, you get the early um, collection of everything. You get to steal everything on your opponent's side. And if they aren't starting with a paratrooper, then that's their problem. Because they're going to have to take at least two turns to walk over to the other side and do the same thing. If you aren't able to collect your stuff already. But again, looking at that 30 second timer, I don't see that strategy as being as viable. I mean, you can still take that approach. You can fly over, collect everything, and then jump into something, considering that there are so many buildings. There are just countless approaches, and I'm I'm loving every second of this, because <laughs> it brings up these talking points. The other thing I wanted to mention in relation to healing is this idea of complacency. The gameplay that you're seeing as we come towards the end of it, complacency slips into my play on the blue team, and things change dramatically. And that is another argument as to why I can see the oversaturation or over-inclusion of healing buildings can so dramatically change those games or consistently change those games that for a lot of players it just completely puts them off, you know, playing on these maps. And I understand that completely, um, but I don't feel that that is... Uh, necessarily the building's fault, I put that down to the player's fault. If you are at a high enough level of play to be able to deal with the inclusion of those buildings, i.e. plan ahead in destroying them, making sure that you completely deny the usage of those buildings, if you allow your opponent a foothold into being able to use said buildings, that is on you, because it is up to you as the player to destroy those buildings, to use them when you need them, and just introducing them into play is different for everybody. Like I said at the start of this video, it's not the norm at the moment. Also, side note, no idea why I positioned him so close to the mash tent. I was trying to jump in, but it didn't pay off, and it, it, it pays off greatly for the blue team, because purple now have a dead sapper that he's just killed with a TNT, and he's positioned right next to said tent, which is on low HP, which as you can assume is going to deal a lot of damage. But I take this turn to heal up the orderly because why not remove poison, get himself up to 75, but they trade healing. Purple and blue trade some heals, Meta gets healed, but Scout gets healed too, and then he gets the head jumps in. And this is where that feeling of complacency starts to slide in. You know, blue team still have the med, they still have some fairly healthy power troopers, and their Grenadier, although he's about to die, uh, they are kind of sitting comfortable in that they are able to deal with the Sapper closest to them. And at the moment, the Scout is kind of a secondary target. So he's not as important until they destroy completely their own ma MASH unit. But you'll notice on the purple side that now that those crates are there and the, uh, the double buildings are used, I figured why use the Mortar when you can just use the Jetpack? get the extra 20 on him plus the damage from the building and then uh, and then use the mortar. But the mortar actually didn't go as planned. You can tell I'm aiming for the pig, but it does actually pay off even though it misses because as you'll see from the tremendous explosion, you destroy both the medical tent and the crates. So the crates are denied. The, the sapper is still alive, so he can still get one last shot in before the end. Uh, and bearing in mind that I only have one more poison grenade, uh, the poison gas is going to come out later, but yeah, I don't know. You can kind of see it's it's a 3v2, but medic drops down to 25. The sapper is within two hits of uh, of dying from some jetpacks. And you kind of think, well, you know, it should be an easy cleanup. But in actual fact, it becomes much, much harder for the blue team. And it gets a bit weird towards the end, like I said, but we'll explain as we <laughs> I'll explain everything as we go, I swear. So to give a bit of insight as to the blue side of thinking, uh, with the sapper about to fall, he is now dealt with. So I figured with a paratrooper on 90, my other para on 114, the obvious idea is just to keep pummeling that scout, keep dealing damage per turn and everything should be fine. And it's interesting as well, considering that this entire video, I've been preaching this idea of normalize the use of healing 
normalize having high HP on uh, mash and medical tents, yet, as you'll see from the gameplay, I myself fail <laughs> on both occasions, really, on both sides of the coin, to take measures to prevent my opponent from uh, from healing. In fact, it's very much a too little, too late kind of situation. Um, but you'll notice that my purple guy, when it comes to the purple team, I'm like, fucking yeah, let's go. I've got all kinds of ideas because I've got all of this armament to play with. Um, so as the blue team, you know, I've got to get some heals in, but I'm very much of the mindset of I don't really care if my medic dies or at least gets the skip uh, because I can take care of him with the last jetpack that I do have. Um, sadly, again, he doesn't get any excess damage from the destruction of the shelter, completely fails, needed the full 30, didn't get it, so the poison is going to come in here, um, and the scout at this point is still, uh, yeah, two hits away, 74 HP, two hits away from being killed, gets the skip turn, or at least makes it kind of a nightmare for the blue team to uh, do anything else other than damage and having to deal with the medic later on. So it takes the full 40 to the face and gets pushed back down into the abyss. Uh, and this is the point where as the purple team, I'm like, right, let's get back over to my side of the map. Let's once again, utilize the shelter to avoid any damage on myself. And I'm like, oh, don't skip. Got to get the, uh, <laughs> got to remove the skip turn. And then it's a 2v1 with two paratroopers that have no jetpacks versus a scout that is on the way to the mash tent that still hasn't been damaged enough, that is still on full HP actually. So I figure I know where you're going because I'm playing against myself like a sad person and I get the full 40 on there. So it just needs one more full shot of damage in order to be destroyed. But as I mentioned earlier, it is the exact uh, scenario of too little too late because I put all the pressure onto the blue side and it's up to this dude in order to get the damage. Now this is where you could argue that it's not fair having 100 HP on a mash tent because you can't take it out with two turns with weapons that deal only 40 HP. And I, I hear that and that's where I'm preaching this idea of you need to take the precautions, you need to deal that damage. But I think uh, regardless of which side you take, I think just more play and testing needs to be done and I need to hop on over, like I said, to death patch to check that out for myself and see how it plays with the typical setup for a league match but nevertheless the paratrooper retreats he does get the damage and the destruction finally on the mash 10 but by this point this scout is now down to 109 hp's worth of health he can easily now make his way back up towards the other paratroopers and this is where it gets kind of weird because as the blue side I wasn't paying attention to the health pools. I thought, yeah, you know, it's, it's the end of the video. It should be uh, an easy win still for the blue team. But then I was like, well, as the purple guy, it makes sense the body block here to put the pressure on the blue paratrooper here to either deal the damage and self-inflict onto his own teammate and make it easier for the purple guy or do something else. And I just say, screw it, we'll go for damage. Deals more onto his own teammate than it does onto the scout. So that then reduces him down to 70, but I, for some reason at this point I thought he was on, or he was, after this shot here, I thought he was going to be on killable range, right? I thought he was going to be below 25 for some reason. No idea, completely wasn't paying attention at all, which is why I'm like, alright, well I'm going to try and get the double kill by sliding this guy down the hill. It, it doesn't really pay off, it gets kind of weird, and it ends up with the scout taken the win. I don't know, crazy times. I'm going to be more sort of paying attention to the health pools in future commentary videos, but I hope you guys have enjoyed this little showcase of uh, the field hospital map. If you have any opinions, thoughts, feelings on any of the stuff that I mentioned in this video, feel free to let me know. And if you want to play it yourself, then check out the link in the description. Head on over to the Hogs of War website at hogsofwar.org forward slash workshop where you'll find the latest download links to both the League maps and many other mods in the community. For now though, I'm going to say peace out everybody, and I'll catch you guys later for the next one.